It's a beautiful day, and I think we have a spectacular event ahead of us. You get to relive those same dreams that you had while you are at Sanford. Decades from now, people will be saying, oh, I'm glad they did that. So it's the dog days of the spring semester. Finals are on the horizon. The class of 2013 is getting ready to walk, but you know what? There's still time for some fun. Hand in Paw brought us some dogs to pet to help take off that stressful edge. And speaking of dogs, how about the Bulldog Bash? Heisman Trophy winner Bo Jackson, AKA the best athlete ever, was our guest. He and Pat Sullivan are good buddies. And this event is to help student athletes and Bo talks about juggling school and sports and what it takes. First of all, as, as, as far as the students, student athletes are concerned, I tried to give them a little background of my upbringing and uh, the, the places where I've been and the places that I'm trying to go. So I give them a little bit of the past, present, and hopefully the future. And many Bulldog fans were able to hang with Bo, who signed autographs and snapped some photos. And you know one thing Bo does know, it's business. And so does Samford University. The Brock School of Business, it's only getting better. And it's about to get a brand new state-of-the-art facility to help mold future business leaders as one of our own steps up to get the project in motion. To Andrew Westmoreland, President of Samford University, from Gary Cooney, date April 26th, pledge of support. In light of our earlier conversations and in accordance with my desire to promote the growth and development of the Brock School of Business at Sanford University, I am writing this memo to outline my pledge of support for the school. I hereby pledge to Sanford University a minimum gift of $12.5 million. <clears throat> I am making this pledge irrevocably with every intention of fulfilling it in its entirety. And here are the renderings of the proposed new Brock School of Business. It'll be a tremendous asset to professors and certainly to students. Just another sign of Samford's growth. It's really going to transform the programs we have now, the students that we have now, but really the programs and students for many generations to come. With Samford's expanding influence throughout our state and our region, our nation, even our world, I think the impact will be impossible to measure. It will be so great in the years ahead that uh, I think decades from now people will be saying, oh, I'm glad they did that. And while we're talking about the business school, Regions Bank partners with the Brock School of Business to put on the Regions New Venture Challenge. It's an entrepreneurship competition where Regions pays winning ideas $20,000. Clean Start, a car wash concept and Happy City Soups, a mobile soup vendor, were this year's winners. We are so excited about this opportunity that we've had. Um, we've learned a lot about business. We've learned a lot about Sanford's business school, um, just the great people that are in it. Up to 40 hours a week, even at one point, um, just working on soup, looking at recipes and um, trying different things, experimenting, and then actually going out there and setting up and selling. This year marks the fifth year anniversary of the region's Venture Challenge. So we go from quinquennial to quadricentennial. That's a fifth year anniversary to a 25th year anniversary. So that means we're talking about the Beeson Divinity School. 2013 marks their 25th year and they celebrated with a processional from Ralph Beeson's statue all the way to Hodges Chapel. Richard Bues from All Souls Church in England gave the sermon and Dean George tells us about the school's secret to success. There are two things you absolutely cannot do without, and they are teachers who love to teach and students who are eager to learn. And we've been blessed with an abundance of both in these past uh, two and a half decades. Now tracing back all the way to Sanford's roots is the old Howard 100. The annual bike race helps promote Alabama's black belt where Howard College was born back in 1841. This year's race once again started in Marion and took riders to historic Selma, Alabama. I've been organizing this ride since the first year, 2005. This is the ninth year, and this was a record number of pre-registered riders at 192. And our walk-up table had long lines this morning, so we know we're going to be at a record. It's a beautiful day, 
and I think we, we have a spectacular event ahead of us. Proceeds from the race go to sowing seeds of hope. Meanwhile, back in Birmingham at the club, Sanford alums gathered for the African American luncheon. Sanford basketball coach Benny Seltzer entertained the crowd as the featured speaker. The event has grown so much it had to be moved off campus. To see events like this really mean a lot. It really shows that Sanford is strongly invested into the community, wanting to reach back and make sure that all alumni associations have a platform. So it's really good to see things like this happening. They're putting on events to you know reconnect, reconnect those that's been within the area and then you get to relive those same dreams that you had while you were at Sanford. I really appreciate events like the Diversity Luncher where African Americans can come together and not just students at Sanford currently, but our alumni. It's great to see them come back and be a part of our Sanford community. Now back here on campus, the Mann Center for Ethics and Leadership held the Southeastern Regional for Academic Integrity Conference. They welcomed 26 schools from seven states. Of course, many practices to achieve and promote academic integrity were discussed, including an interesting session called Better World Theater, teaching ethics through the arts, in this case, a play. I think one thing that will impact our students as they see that we're doing this, it'll just remind them that we take academic integrity seriously. But I think it also positions to students that Sanford is a thought leader in a lot of areas even in dust that they might not expect us to be. From good practices of ethics to good earth practices, Earth Day at Samford allows students to showcase projects that can help the earth and inform others on ways they can do their part. An exciting and fun learning experience for everybody. I think it's really important to have an opportunity like this. A lot of the times we forget about our environment and climate and what goes on and we really should pay closer attention to that. It's not necessarily um, about the stigma of what Earth Day means, represents to the world as a whole, but um, just how we can incorporate our love for the Lord and creation and um, the understanding of the world around us. And part of Earth Day just happened to fall during Spring Fling. We saw folks eating some watermelon on a sun shining spring day. They had their pictures taken at a fun phone booth. And while the dunking booth was refreshing, the Spring Fling concert featuring the band Love and Theft was even better. So as you can see, there is no rest for the weary here at Sanford. We are full speed ahead to commencement here in a couple of weeks. Now before I go, I want to show you the men's tennis team. The guys won the Southern Conference Tournament and are now in the NCAA Tournament. So congrats to them. And how about this story? It's Golda Koski. She's a former Sanford Acapella Choir member, and she's back on campus celebrating her 100th birthday, and she was surprised by this year's choir with a few songs. A wonderful sight for Miss Koski. All right, folks, you've been watching the Sanford Chronicle. Remember, for all your Sanford news, head to sanford.edu. Till next time, I'm Brad Radisi, and you've been watching the Sanford Chronicle.